What's up folks? I recently purchased a brand new Nikon ZF and immediately put it to use on a recent engagement session and took it with me on a family vacation and just wanted to give my thoughts and first impressions on the camera. So here we go. Now why did I buy this camera? Why did I run out and buy a Nikon ZF but skip on the Nikon Z8? Well there are several reasons for this. But to see where my inspiration stems from, we have to go back a few months to earlier this year when I was hired to document a client at the Kentucky Derby. Now, when I got the call, I was excited to do this job, but as I did my research on the event, I quickly realized that they didn't allow any interchangeable lens cameras, aka professional cameras. So that means if I showed up with my Z9, I'm sure I would immediately get turned away from the door, and the same would probably happen with my Z6. But I really wanted to do this job. So I thought about what I could use instead of my Nikons and two things came to mind, either a Fuji or a Leica. Because both brands make small, unassuming, retro style cameras that don't look very sophisticated, but at the same time give you exceptional image quality. So I ended up renting the Leica Q2 from Lens Rentals because it was small and compact, it looked like a point and shoot, but it had a full frame sensor and a wide angle lens. I figured I can get through the door with a camera like that, but also deliver the kind of quality imagery that I was hired to produce. And I must say, after my short time with the Leica Q2, which was by the way my first time using the Leica, I finally understand why Leica people love Leica. I found myself trying to figure out how many organs I would have to donate or sell or whatever the case to uh, be able to figure out how to afford a Leica because I was in love with the concept of a beautiful and stylish compact full frame camera with exceptional image quality. It was right then and there that I realized or really understood the purpose of the Sony a7C. You see, um, I always thought that the a7C was just like a mini a7 III with like strip features to just make the a7 III smaller, um, but that's not the case. What I realized is that Sony, it's Sony's way of trying to appeal to users who want the benefits of say a Leica M, but can't afford one. Fast forward to today, and Nikon has entered the chat with the Nikon ZF, a small, beautifully compact style full frame camera that is unassuming but capable of amazing photo and video. The perfect camera for somebody who, like myself, was waiting for Fuji to make a full frame Expo 3 because I can't afford to spend $10,000 on a Leica. And I'm sure there's a lot of people like me with that same predicament. And with Nikon's 100 plus year history of making cameras, they are the perfect manufacturer to fill in that gap. Although the ZF is not quite as small as say a Leica Q or a Fuji X-T5 and ergonomically it's not the most comfortable camera in the bunch, it's still a great option to consider in this style of camera and it's still packed with a lot of features. Which, you know, funny enough, the design inspires me to want to take more risk and capture better moments. Another reason I felt like this would be a great camera for me to take advantage of was because of its awesome hybrid capabilities. Now even though the design of this camera doesn't seem like something a video shooter would run to pick up for video work, the video specs seem to be exactly what I was looking for in a content creation box. All I want is 4K 10-bit 422 quality video with slow motion at least 4K 60 on a full frame camera with IBIS and a flippy screen for vlogging. This camera pretty much meets those needs. My only issue is that the 4K 60 is cropped with APS-C framing, but I can work around that. But I was seriously considering buying a Sony ZV-E1 for YouTube vlogging and content creation, but the price point and the features of the ZF stopped me right in my tracks. Like I was that close. Like the, the ZV-E1 is like, it's perfectly specced and at an amazing price point, right? It almost had me. Either that or the Z30, right? <laughs> but it seems like every time I get close to buying a Sony camera for whatever reason, Nikon releases something to hold me over. Now. I've had a few people ask me about this camera and how it compares to the Z6 II or Z8 in terms of autofocus. I'll just say that I think in terms of autofocus performance, Nikon has found its rhythm with the XB7 processor and this is the trickle down effect that we've been waiting for. I haven't really put this camera through any super challenging situations, uh, but so far the AF performance reminds me of what I get from my Z9. Of course the Z9 and Z8 use a more advanced sensor in conjunction with the XB7 processor. So I don't expect the ZF to give you that exact same level of performance that maybe the Z9 is capable of, but this is all speculation. I can't say for sure. But what I can say is that it's a huge step up in performance from the Z6 II, and I applaud Nikon for pulling a Sony and putting their top of the line features in a lower end camera. 
Although to be honest, it kind of seems like overkill putting such a powerful autofocus system in this kind of camera. But at the same time, I do realize that Nikon had no choice, right? They, they kind of, they got to put up a shutter. Um, but I'm actually more excited to use some cool manual focus lenses with this camera. I think that's where the fun and excitement is in a camera like this. But overall, I'm impressed and happy that Nikon released this camera. I just got back from a family trip to Disneyland and I was very happy with the performance and the experience that I had documenting my family memories all while creating content for YouTube. I even had a few people mistake it for an actual film camera. And that's the thing. There's a huge community of photographers who are more attracted or inspired by a retro classic looking camera with modern top of the line internals. When I was using the Leica Q, one of the first things you notice is how simple and to the point the design is. The Leica definitely feels like a photography first type of camera. Not a lot of buttons to distract you, and in a weird way, the simple, elegant design inspires you to take better images. And that's one of the things I love about the ZF. It's like Nikon put just enough controls to allow you to get shit done, but not too many controls to distract you or overwhelm you with options. I think with proper lens support, aka small, compact, but high quality, uh, fast aperture primes, right? and cool accessories and a limited availability because remember the harder they are to find the more people are going to want them right but yeah with all of that i think that the nikon zf can develop a cult-like following and a loyal fan base similar to like fuji has because remember having the camera is cool but if there are no lenses to match and keep up then the inspiration to create suffers i said this a while ago when i did my z62 review I said that the lenses sell the bodies, all right? Part of the reason that Leica people love Leica so much is because of the Leica glass. The 28 millimeter 1.7 Summerlux on the Leica Q produces some of the sharpest images that I've ever seen, all while being shot wide open and still managing to be compact. I finally think I understand what micro contrast is after using the Leica Summerlux 28. So yeah, I'm excited to try some cool uh, Voigtlander glass and also the adaptability of the Z-mount opens the door to a vast amount of options from other manufacturers, especially with adapters like the Megadap ETZ and things like that. Like you have a world of options that are opening up with the Nikon ZF. So yeah, I'm excited for the future of that. But yeah, stay tuned for more videos featuring this camera in the future. I'm excited for the things to come. And also let me know what your thoughts are. Are you excited for the ZF? Do you plan on buying one? Or are you waiting for the Z63? Hear me out, Nikon. A Z63 with that 33 megapixel A74 sensor with the XB7 processor and 4K 60 10 bit with no crop for about $2,500 and it's Nikon to the moon. But, anyways, um, once again, thank you for making it this far and tuning in. Stay tuned for the next video and peace out.